Breaking news in the case against Brian Koberger, a second, more definitive DNA test taken from suspect Brian Koberger's cheek swab matched DNA left on that infamous knife sheath that Koberger allegedly left behind. What does this mean for the case? Uh, what does it mean that we, what we learned about the location of the sheath and how that makes the case even stronger? News Nation Law and Justice contributor and former uh, FBI agent Jennifer Coffendaffer coming to us from far away, even though she's not supposed to be working because she cares that much. And forensics analyst and professor emeritus from the John Jay College of Criminal Science, only the best, Dr. Larry Kobolinski. All right, first, Coffendaffer. Um, the genealogy route uh, was novel but needed a layering effect for evidentiary purposes. What have they achieved and how did they do it now? Well, this is great because it's actually direct evidence, right? It directly applies to Brian Koberger. There's nothing in between for all the individuals who are skeptic about genetic genealogy. You don't have to go through those steps. This is Brian Koberger's DNA on that snap. Kobolinski. Uh, in terms of them taking this step to get the warrant to do the DNA cheek swab, uh, is that unusual? And uh, what is your appraisal of the effort? Well, it's not unusual. They had an abandonment specimen, uh, which they found at the Koberger home in Pennsylvania. And that turned out what to be uh, a relative. Uh, an abandonment specimen means that somebody threw something into the garbage. Uh, and it turned out to be it was Brian's father. Uh, and whatever it was that they looked at, it had DNA and had a profile very similar to the profile on the K-Bar knife sheath. So they knew it was a relative. Uh, and that was very important information. But once a person is arrested, there's going to be a warrant, uh, an order to take a cheek swab. Uh, they take a, a little swab. It's a sterile cotton swab. They uh, roll it around the inside of the cheek several times, uh, and they extract DNA, and they get a, 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 a wonderful, a perfect sample of his DNA, Brian uh, Koberger's DNA, and then they make the comparison. Uh, right. This is not indirect. This is very direct. It shows that the DNA on that K-Bar knife sheath was his, and that that knife sheath was found at the crime scene in Moscow. It was under a comforter and under... Uh, uh, one of the one of the victims, uh, mm -hmm. Mo Megan. Uh, right. You answered uh, my next under, question. Under the idea. The, you answered my next question. And, and to Kobolinsky's point, they measure uh, the likelihood that it is Koberger's DNA by a degree of right. the word is octillion. OK, like billion, <laughs> trillion, octillion is eight times that factor. Yeah. So uh, the chances are overwhelming that it's his. One question uh, of intrigue was, well, maybe somebody planted the sheath. And as Larry just laid out to you, they found it under the body as part of the scene. Uh, the idea that it was planted, highly unlikely. The, the second part, uh, now that we know that it was found under Maddie's body, one of the victims uh, coffined after. The second one is this intrigue that, oh, but they may not have uh, done this the right way in terms of getting the warrants the right way. And that could undercut the prosecution. In terms of going from genealogy to the swab, does this look like they followed the book? Oh, they followed the book. They I, went over really what they had to do to collect this uh, specimen. They got that warrant immediately when they went in there. They swabbed him. And that's the way to do it. This way, there it's above reproach in terms of the specimen they can they collected. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to newsnationnow.com, newsnationnow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.